Disengaging primary cryofeed. Clank, get the light, would ya? Ratchet and Clank All for One is the 10th iteration of the famous Ratchet and Clank series from Insomniac Games. This game comes two years after a crack in time, and focuses more on four player co-op action rather than the traditional single player platform style that we're used to. With that being said, is the latest instalment of the Ratchet and Clank franchise as credible as its predecessors? Sadly, Ratchet and Clank All for One is a hit and miss affair. Whereas A Crack in Time and several other Ratchet and Clank titles offered both large and impressive levels for you to explore, All for One is mostly a linear action game with the only one obvious path for you to follow. There's not an opportunity in the game where you have to solve puzzles or even do sightseeing like in previous Ratchet and Clank titles. The majority of your time will be spent walking around, shooting or beating up a plethora of the same looking baddies. Another thing that may prevent people from liking the game is the camera angle. Because the game has to accommodate for up to four players simultaneously, the camera is fixed which can lead to moments of frustrating gameplay. Having four players on the screen at one time can be hectic as the camera zooms out and it's often hard to see where you're going. That's not to say the co-op feature in All For One isn't fun, because it can be depending on the number of people who are playing. From my experience, I felt the game was more tolerable if you played with only two players at one time. The camera is more stable with only two players, and it's much easier for you to work cooperatively. Another railway station at the foot of the cavern. In terms of playing online or offline, I recommend you playing offline instead. This is because many bugs occur when you're playing online. Although the game thankfully doesn't suffer much lag, there are often times when the game doesn't load up the next area. On more than one occasion, the task was to pick up an energy bulb and chuck it at a door to proceed to the next area. This was achievable when I was playing offline, but on the same area online it didn't work. The game wouldn't allow me to pick up the energy bulb, so I couldn't proceed to the next area. The only thing you can do is reset the game and start all over again, which is painfully annoying at times. So fast, nefarious. You've done some underhanded things in your time, but this beats all. I'm starting to think there may not even be an intergalactic tool of justice award. The one thing Orph One does correctly is that it retains the humour that is reminiscent of the entire series. This time, Ratchet and Clank are joined by the cocky superhero turned president, Captain Quark, and even their old arch nemesis, Dr. Nefarious. The witty banter that happens between the four is quite funny, and will make long term Ratchet and Clank fans smile. something. All in all, Ratchet and Clank All for One is not an excellent follow-up to the critically acclaimed A Crack in Time which came out just two years ago. Some gamers may love the chaos of the four-player co-op, while others will hate the awkward camera that comes along with it. Hardcore fans of the series should definitely check this game out, while others may want to rent this first to see if the new gameplay style suits their taste. We give Ratchet and Clank All for One a 3 out of 5. For our full written review, please check out JustPushStart.com. This is Oliver East, signing out.